Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the gentle warmth of your divine light. And today it is time for episode 12 of my Let's Play of, of Paradise Killer. So without further ado, we're just going to pick up exactly where we left off, probably. We were last time, as Tegan and Sarah once said, walking with the ghost. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit at a loss as what to do here. We have a couple of direct leads, which should give us an indication of where to go next. But um, I have been very much afflicted by the investigator's sickness, the uh, unfortunate habit of wandering around looking at stuff. Generally speaking, when I play an open world game that I am enjoying a lot and where I am enjoying exploring the locations a lot, I find myself um, having adventures. Most open world games can't trigger this state in me. They have to have a lot of interesting and unique stuff. The vast majority of open world games rely on copy-pasted content to bulk out their areas. Um, this does not, which is good. But that does mean that I will pick a location, walk my way there, on the way I will see something interesting. I will get distracted by that interesting thing. And I will find myself relentlessly sidetracked. Let's just grab this while we're here. Symbol of a bar master. The perfect drink on a perfect evening. Bliss. It never lasts, though. The night always ends. The morning always comes. Routine will always be waiting for you. We also got a nice tasty dead nebula. I wonder if I'll ever actually get anything out of this. I mean, other than the cans of drink, obviously. Provocative flower. A sweet seasonal drink popular with kids. Uses flavors from flowers around the island to create a unique taste. Provocative Flower sounds like a good song title. Actually, most of the Dead Nebula drinks sound like they'd make good songs. I'm sure some of them are distilled from songs. Anyway, this is the Reality Folding Drive, which is the piece of arcane machinery which uh, maintains the existence of the Paradise Islands as this odd little soap bubble outside of real, real reality, normal reality. Um, reality classic flavour, which is... Uh, different to our own reality, although implicitly perhaps our far future. We need cosmos for that. Also, I've realised that um, these these markers aren't just points of interest. I believe they're specifically nightmare computers that I haven't unlocked. So that's good to know. Anyway, so yeah, basically my decision now is what am I going to do? This guy wants me to find his uh, find his, his fish tank. We could go that way and explore the beach in order to find Lydia, who's, I guess, that way. She's round the other side of the beach. We could head back up to the mountain and uh, explore the ritual slaughter hall. We could pick literally any goddamn character we haven't talked to yet, which is probably what I should do. In fact, I think I am going to go talk to Crimson Acid. Ah, no, fuck it. Let's go talk to Lydia. See, this is the one flaw with doing a... Um, blind let's play is that um, unlike my uh, my carefully planned in-depth and well-researched let's plays which is most of them uh, and you should go check those out by the way if you haven't already uh, I do recommend my sadly unfinished dishonored let's play that was probably the best I've ever been at making let's plays uh, but that's besides the point which is that um, I don't really have a plan for where I'm going and what I'm doing. Ideally, the game itself would lead me through its own content, but um, it kind of is, and I just kind of haven't been. It's fairly obvious that um, what it wants you to do first is go talk to all of the people, and each of the people you talk to tells you, or at least suggests to you, that you go do something else or talk to someone else in particular. So, um, obviously going and doing that thing is the next thing to do, but, of course, because I'm really interested in this place and I'm enjoying this game, I have succumbed to my mind sickness and, uh, probably got distracted every single time and, uh, just been columboing my way around, rummaging and thinking, and, huh, I wonder what that thing over there is, and checking it out and poking it and solving puzzles that nobody asked me to solve and that have, I have no reason to assume are connected 
to the uh, investigation. Playful stones. A common game amongst children is the celestial thrones. Stones are arranged on a grid, and the players take turns moving them to capture the opponent's stones and stacking them. Oddly phrased, but sure. Uh, this was back before they invented fun. So, yeah. One of the side effects of that is that I do feel metagamey. I talked about this in a previous episode, but um, metagaming is essentially using knowledge from outside of the game the game that you're playing. It's usually more of a thing in tabletop role-playing games where it can break the experience for all of the involved uh, people because you are, you know, concluding things that your character would not possibly be able to conclude based on your knowledge of the genre conventions. This is a lot less of a problem in video games, but um, it can still, to some extent, ruin the experience for yourself. Generally speaking, if something is in the game world, it's going to be relevant to the investigation or the plot of that game or whatever you're doing. So it is naturally compelling to search out and explore every every inch of that environment. It looks like I can get up here from below, which is probably the intended path, so I'm going to go back around and take that route. But yeah, so... You see this a lot in, in RPGs which have a sense of urgency. Uh, and in fact, the increasing sense of urgency over the course of the um, uh, Elder Scrolls and other um, Bethesda RPGs, which have come out over the last decade and a half, with each iteration of the franchise, they increase the urgency of the main character's quest, which completely fundamentally undermines what's fun about those games. It's the exploration and the wandering and finding all sorts of weird shit and making your own fun and... Um, becoming a person within the context of that setting. The one that really got this right was Morrowind, which uh, kicks off essentially by telling you, go learn who you, you're, you know, you're a new immigrant to this place, go get a job, go learn who you are, go make some friends. Later, if you want, you can come back and there is a main quest for you. So that urgency is kind of a fundamentally betraying factor in so many games, because these games also want you to wander off and explore. By making you an investigator and telling you there is no time limit, really, in a realistic sense, you are free to just explore every puzzle. But the thing is, a part and parcel of that is that you know every puzzle you encounter will be relevant to your investigation, or at least you can assume that. And that's where the meta that's the metagaming. I don't feel like this character has a natural path through this world because I'm compulsively investigating every puzzle because I know every puzzle will end up being related to the plot in some way. Um, some games do evade this, and they just include stuff that's there for depth of the of the world, or for just fun, really. Um, and that's good. I have yet to encounter any of that in this game, though, which means that I'm more inclined to think any puzzle I encounter is related to the plot. This is the boarding point for boat trips which go around the island. The sign says the boat roads were shut down by Yuri Knight a few days ago. There's no reason given. I wonder why. Why would he shut them down early? Interesting. So, when w the citizen slaughter ritual was last night, right? So there's no reason to stop doing the the boat rides early. Maybe he was trying to squeeze some extra money out of his business. This is less directly tying him into the situation than most of the other characters' uh, suspicious elements of what they're up to. Tropical, the blue. The ocean is so blue, more blue than it has any right to be. Maybe a god lies buried beneath that sand. Well, it seems like we've buried gods all over the damn island, so who knows. A three. My second favourite paper size. Power of goat. A soda with additives to give you an energy boost. You too can have the power of the holy goat. Right, um, yeah, so somewhere around here should be Lydia, I think. And uh, somewhere around here should also be... Should also be a ghost that I spotted from a great distance away, by which I mean up on top of that ziggurat. Oh hey, I could try and jump down on top of that obelisk and try and get what that item is. What is it? I guess this isn't where Lydia is. Um, I was. She said she'd be waiting on the beach. This is the area of the game world which is called the beach, right? 
Yeah, I'm. You are here, Beach. Interesting. Huh. Looks like the last remaining party has left behind. Bunch of useful cash. I should probably go talk to Crimson Acid soon and pick up that upgrade. Oh, hey Shinji. Do you think whoever did the murder is evil? They have to be right. Murder is evil, and so on. Evil is a worthless trait cowards assign to people they wish didn't exist. It's a hand wave. By not examining why we think of them as evil, we learn less about ourselves and our society. Now see, that I significantly agree with. The Syndicate is trying to resurrect a race of alien gods that enslaved man and fought millennia long wars. I don't think you should be spouting off about evil. I mean, we know that she has some kind of proletarian sympathies with the, uh, the beleaguered citizens of this place. The, um, kidnapped and forced to work, but don't call them slaves citizens. You know what, Shinji? I agree with you. That's a surprise. I had some time to think in the Idle Lands. Oh man, I love it when people lose their faith. Have a good one, you heathen. Ha 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 yourself. Okay, let's take a look over here and then let's climb up the climb up wall and um, mount the mountable and explore the explorable and uh, talk to another ghost. It happened right here. Can you believe it? Believe what? A horror, a waking horror. This island, it's a carnival of nightmares. It has its charms. You're insane. You're all insane. You're lucky you weren't got by him. By who? The vampire. That horror, the vampire horror. A vampire killed you? On this beach, a nighttime stroll resulted in gross murder. When was this? What is time on these islands? No one cared. No one believes in vampires, but it happened. I can't leave this place until I know there is evidence. Well, finding evidence is what I do. The horror. Like, um, props to Lady Love Dies. I, I think that it is never wrong to help a ghost. Quivering jellyfish corpse. On one night every month, lots of jellyfish commit suicide by beaching themselves. It is speculated that this is related to the cycle of the moon. So yeah, um, I do I do quite like the, um, hang on a second, I'm pretty sure I remember talking about whether or not it's ethical to help a ghost on a previous episode, but it was an episode of a different let's play. Of a different let's play? Well, good to know I have some consistency, I guess. Uh, if anyone remembers what that was, please let me know, because it's going to be bothering me for ages, but I do not I do not have a hundred hours to watch the literal hundreds of hours of content I have up on this channel. Time to let blood in favour of the Silent Goat, which... I wonder if the Silent Goat is just the latest god they're trying to resurrect, or if they're trying to resurrect a whole bunch contemporaneously. Relic Endless Moon. The Goat Woman settled in France and defended the country from Dyer Rose. Imprisoned in the underground palace in France during the Great Betrayal. What do the French feel about gods? Um. Anyway. Island Sequence 22. The vampire murders begin. We will be haunted by this vile monster in our ranks. Well shit, that sure sounds like evidence, but because it's the wrong item type, I doubt I can use it as such. Um, if you ask me, though, that's extremely evidence that there is a vampire around, which is news to me, but okay. Aspirational view. Wouldn't it be great to have an apartment with a view like this? Imagine how few problems you'd have. Mood. <laughs> Man, okay, so I might be reaching here, but this feels like a reference to the fact that, like... The brainwashing of capitalism runs pretty much entirely on um, tricking people into aspirationalism. The idea that one day, one day you'll have nice things, except that the system requires that the vast majority of people have as few nice things as possible. Um, like, so much of the art and culture in our society is built around reinforcing this idea that um, you can have nice things. You see poor people on TV with far nicer apartments with far nicer views and far nicer places than you'll ever have despite the fact they're apparently just as beleaguered as you. 
Um, it's all there to just reinforce this idea that you can attain that one day, so don't you dare think about bucking this system which is destroying you and everyone you know. Relic obtained. Island Sequence 18. The erroneous timelines. Gregory Complex gave his life so that they may be switched back. <laughs> Gregory Complex. I think I find him quite simple. C5. Pillar Flower, a standard carbonated soda drink, popular with people that enjoy sitting on their balconies trying not to look their neighbour in the eye. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, hello. Dead Nebula thanks you for your continued patronage. You have tried a lot of the refreshing beverages we make. You are a most valued customer. Do you have a favourite? Uh... That's great. Good answer. You must be a hit at parties. Never mind that. Remember the upgrade for Starlight we mentioned? We've come through for you. Hang on for a sec. The vending machine has been soft rebooted. You should be able to get the upgrade thing out of it now. Don't forget, it's in the warehouses. Why is hardware like that jammed in a vending machine? The dead nebula security chief is a real moron. He'd been showing off just before the slaughter ritual. He thinks exposing OS loopholes is a great way to impress people. Is it not? I mean, I'm sure I'm impressed whenever someone explains to me, like, any kind of software exploit. That's why I watch speedruns. Why did he have a Starlight upgrade? He did a favour for someone he shouldn't have in the Syndicate. They promised him a piece of Syndicate tech in return. What he got was an un unusable upgrade for use on a device he would never see. Like we said, moron. How did it end up in a vending machine? Marshalls came knocking. He tried to hide it. It's jammed in the dispensing mechanism and should come out if you try making a purchase now that it's been rebooted. Works for me, I appreciate it. Go get him, Lady Love Dies. If the culprit lets out a confession in range of our microphones, we'll let you know. Oh, that's, uh, interesting. So I guess it's jammed in a micro- uh, it's jammed in a machine go- did not mean go get it. It's jammed in a machine meant we'll give it to you later. Still, um, one of the things I do like is that this society is presented as a fait accompli. We're supposed to believe, genuinely, that this society- is inviolable and um, the privileged members of this society believe that the system works as it should even those of her, those of them which are literally undermining it always they believe you know it's different when i do it the system works but it's okay that i take a bribe the system works but it's okay that i um traffic in in illegal favors um it's more subtle than most of the elements of this game world so far, but I appreciate that it's there, this fundamental hypocrisy, which is so common, um, especially by those invested in the systems in which they in, in which they exist. The people who benefit from those systems, after all, are the people most invested in both cheating them and uh, pretending that they are perfect and inviolable. Headlights on the Shore by Apoc Midnight melancholy on a desolate road You can't beat it Absolute loneliness Just you and the choices you made Make sure you get home safe Oh, I like this one, this is more synth- Actually, I'm gonna put that on if I can It's more, more chill and synth wavy than most of the, um Hmm, okay, that doesn't- is there no way for me to actually select which song plays? I can edit the playlist. I can have it reshuffle the playlist and restart the playlist and empty the playlist. <laughs> but I can't have it... Um... I suppose I could... If I, sort the f if I sort the top track out for this and then restart the playlist, Yeah, headlights on the shore. Yeah, okay, good. Anyway, um, so well, one of the major differences between Synthwave and Vaporwave, which I will talk about at great extent eventually in this Let's Play, even though I haven't really done it at all yet, um, is that um, 
Vaporwave is more strongly influenced by sort of 90s pop culture, uh, whereas Synthwave draws explicitly from um, 80s pop culture and um, especially the uh, like synth pop, synth rock main themes of, uh, of so many films and TV shows of the era. Oh, hello. This looks important. Recording 005. The lines stop and start. Geometric. Crisscrossing the air. But not everywhere. I had a visit from the marshals. They're on to me. I bet it was the guy next door. All he does is feed the fish and gossip. Get a life. Well, gee, sounds like that guy sure drinks uh, a lot of whatever that soda was that I picked out of the machine a little while back. Um, but um, also... Uh, Vaporwave is also more strongly Japanese influenced and blends 90s pop cultural ennui with, um, I guess uh, you would call it um, kind of 80s Japanese jazz synth pop stuff. Well, not synth really, but jazz pop stuff. Relic Island sequence 19. When you sat with me and looked at the moon. It's just occurred to me that all of these things are written to some extent in the first person. Is Starlight perhaps analysing these? Or, um... And talking about itself as if it were a person? Or is Lady Love Dies thinking about someone else while she says these things? So many of them are like, you and I sat and looked at the moon, or whatever. Uh, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I was talking about Synthwave and Vaporwave. I will come back to that another episode. What the hell is this? Button's not working. Oh, that's a... That's security camera, baby. That means there is a security camera attached to the back end of... Um, what's his name's office? The Doctor. Doctor Doom Jazz. Cosmos and Pyramids, once again, we don't have those, so we'll have to come back when we have Cosmos and Pyramids, which will hopefully allow us to um, harvest a bit more evidence out of some of these things. Anyway, so last thing I'm going to do is go find out what that item is, and that'll be it for today. I don't think I can get up here, can I? No. Okay, so I can't go that... I'd have to climb all the way up the zigger. Wait a second. Through the magic of editing, perhaps? Well, that was a lot easier to get up here than I thought. The question is, can I land on this safely? I'm almost certainly going to miss, but let's give it a go. Ah, fuck. <laughs> well, I'm not climbing all the way back up there, and it looks like that's just a starlight skin. Which would be nice to have, but I'm not... You know, it's like, what am I, made of time? Uh, anyway, hopefully I'll think a little bit more about the... Um, the nature of this game's actual capitalist critique, because it's clear from what the developers have said that they wanted to make a critique of many things, especially capitalism. One of their explicitly stated artistic goals for this game is to create this, like mind-warped, far-reaching fut futuristic cyber-hell parody of of capitalism, which is of course why everybody here is captured and forced to work, uh, which is about as on, on the nose as you can get because, you know, ultimately uh, using human bodies as capital in and of themselves is, um, you know, as like a store of value that you can force to do stuff, which isn't really what capital is, I'm just mumbling and rambling, but like, it's kind of the purest expression of that. Anyway, so it looks like we found our way back to... Um, Back to the citizen housing, and we still haven't found Lydia, so I'm going to get up onto the main street here and then s then see if I can... Uh... Well, I'll explore and find all these items a bit later, but um... I'll see if Lydia's up here. Actually, I can just check with... Ah, there she is. So next episode we'll be talking to Lydia and uh, probably grilling her on the nature of some of the peculiar items we found associated with her. But that's going to be all from me for today, so um, 
I will catch you next episode. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.